Welcome back. This is the first video for chapter 19. Uh, and in chapter 19, we are going to basically build the ISLM model for an open economy, which is called the Mundell Fleming model. So in chapter 18, we looked at the uh, IS curve in an open economy and the effects of the exchange rate. And in, in this video, we're going to think about that both in terms of when uh, the exchange rate is determined in the foreign exchange market, which is true for most economies now. And at the end, we'll look a little bit at what happens when you have a fixed exchange rate, and then we'll continue that discussion in uh, chapter 20. So this gives you, us a, a better tool to think about what will happen for a country like the United States, which is in, in an open economy with a floating exchange rate when we have you know things like changes in monetary policy changes in fiscal policy and how that will affect not only you know the domestic economy but also imports and exports so this is where we sort of ended in chapter 18 which is our equilibrium in the goods market um, where we start with c plus i plus g as domestic demand we take out imports um, adjusting for the exchange rate, and then we add in exports. And so recall that imports depend on our own uh, GDP and income and the exchange rate, um, and exports depend on foreign GDP or income and also the exchange rate. Um, so we can, the, the good news is that the exchange rate um, has the same effect in total with imports and exports. So a, a real appreciation, so when the real exchange rate goes up, um, that increases imports and decreases exports. Um, and since we're subtracting out imports and adding in exports, that's the same direction. And a real depreciation when the real exchange rate goes down, increases exports and decreases imports. And so that moves in the same direction as well. So we can combine all of this into net exports. So we can write it as, you know, output real GDP is equal to consumer spending plus investment spending plus government spending, which is still considered to be exogenous, um, plus net exports. And so net exports now will depend negatively on our own uh, GDP output income, Y, positively on foreign GDP, Y star, and negatively on the real exchange rate. So that when the real exchange rate appreciates, net exports go down. And when the real exchange rate depreciates, net exports go up. Now, if so remember that the real exchange rate is equal to the nominal exchange rate times uh, the ratio of the domestic price level to the foreign price level. So uh, if that ratio stays the same, which it probably will in the short run at least, right, unless one country is experiencing much faster inflation than the other country, uh, then we can write this in terms of the nominal exchange rate, E. And so that's going to be important because our uncovered interest parity condition uh, where we compare the domestic um, interest rate with a foreign interest rate depends on the nominal exchange rate. So that's why we're adding that back in here. So the only difference between 19.1 and 19.2 is that now we're looking at the nominal exchange rate. And so you can kind of think of this as, all right, this is probably plausible in the short run. Um, will be less plausible in the medium run when those price levels between the two different countries can vary. So now we want to look at equilibrium in the financial markets, and we're going to use our interest parity condition from Chapter 17, where we have the nominal exchange rate is equal to 1 plus IT over 1 plus I star T, so the ratio of the domestic interest rate to the foreign interest rate times the expected future interest rate. And again, we're going to assume that the expected, in, uh, excuse me, exchange rate, the expected future exchange rate. We're going to assume that that expected future exchange rate is fixed. So that means that the current exchange rate is going to depend on this ratio between domestic interest rates and foreign interest rates. So if the domestic interest rate goes up, the current exchange rate will go up. And if the uh, foreign exchange rate goes up, the current exchange rate uh, will go down. So this is going to be important because this is going to uh, be what we sort of add in to our ISLM model in order to think about how movements in interest rates will influence exchange rates. 
And then, of course, how that change in exchange rates will affect the real economy um, domestically. So first, we want to think a little bit about um, what you know happens in uh, emerging countries when there are uh, changes in interest rates, right? And so a sudden stop in an emerging economy occurs when the interest parity fails. And so there's differences in uh, the interest rates and that changes the exchange rate. So the exchange rate fell a lot. Um, and you can see, you know, there are these sudden stops where there is a huge outflow um, from these economies, bond markets. Um, and often what happens when there's this sort of huge outflow is that there's a big inflow into the United States. Um, and that's often because the United States is sort of looked on as the sort of least risky investment uh, internationally. And so if you're pulling money out of an emerging economy because you're concerned about risk, either exchange rate risk or default risk um, or some other type of risk, often the money goes into the United States. And of course, that increases bond prices, uh, increases uh, equity prices, decreases interest rates. And this is really one of the reasons why the United States um, is able to borrow at such low interest rates is because there is a large demand for this low uh, risk uh, investments um, from international capital. Um, so this is important to keep in mind, especially when you're thinking about, you know, sort of small open economies, especially small open economies that might not be as uh, developed as, say, some of the smaller Western European uh, economies, right? So the small open economies, you know, in East Asia, um, in Central and South America, uh, they can experience these large capital flows, which really um, change interest rates and exchange rates domestically and can really mess with their economies.